how many of you have written this year mains? Any of you have written? Most of you belong to PCM batch. So how many of you have gone through this paper? Question paper. Good. Two sir. So how many of you are already done with the ethics syllabus? At least one ready. All. Let's. This is like workshop. Be it a two-way conversation. It's not that I am giving instructions or giving orders. Let it be interaction. I I learn from you also. You might be knowing better than me, and I might be knowing some points better than you. Let it be two-way conversation. Right. So we'll start with this. Oh, hope everyone has got a question paper. Could you not be thirty? Right. So the first question is the application of artificial intelligence as a dependable source of input for administrative and operational decision making is a debatable issue. Critically examine the statement from the point of from ethical point of view. So here the question is about artificial intelligence, which is a point of debate, and again we have to critically examine whether. The application of artificial intelligence serves the ethical governance, or whether it is hampering or it is promoting the ethical governance. So the question demands, as such, if we see the question demands the decisions made by machines rather than human emotions. That is removal of objectivity. I mean, promotion of objectivity, removal of discretion. Removal of human emotions. Whether this serves the purpose of better governance, that is the actual demand of the question. So, if we see, if we analyze the question, this question falls into a broad a division between the deontology and teleontology of ethics. Like, to be precise, whether one should be focusing on the process or one should be focusing on the outcome. Right? So, the process as such will be made tamper proof or clear by the machines, which will obviously will be helped by the artificial intelligence. Let's say when there is a large chunk of data, and that chunk of data will be better organized by the artificial intelligence rather than the human work. So, such categorization, segregation will be helped by artificial intelligence. But what about the human emotions? Humans are not just robots, not just machines. So any time the governance, the governance which involves, which involves the humans, we are dealing with the people with emotions, not just logic. Right? So the machines, however, they help in dealing the governance. But Completely or solely depending upon them will definitely lose that emotional touch. So, if we broadly see this question, though the application of AI it it enhances the deontology, that is the process, the procedure, the process which will be followed. This is made tamper proof. This is made efficient. There will be more prudence, more more efficient utilization of resources. But there will be loss of human touch. Let's say, for example, let's say uh, a case where there is large data. You are an officer in the ground. You get a large number of data, and based on the data, every everyone has few criteria to fit in to get the beneficial scheme. Let's say you are dealing in a disaster management. So you get large number of applications and large number of people's data where whether this fellow needs the government assistance or not. That will be automatically filtered out by AI. Like this fellow has got this uh, document, this document is not with him. So these are the real beneficiaries, you go on it. But as such, when you see on the ground, where a old woman, let's say, she doesn't, she might not have some documents, but you know that she is a real beneficiary. So if you are following only through the AI generated governance, you will be missing her as a beneficiary. So, but the procedure is correct, but the outcome is not that effective. Understood? So, if we broadly see, 
as we are discussing the ai though it helps the rules based order or procedure related governance it removes the emotions it removes the discretion sometimes it will become negative so we have to make the balanced approach also in some conditions if you see uh, for example uh, there was one uh, microsoft twitter account called tai tay so this this generated a lot of hatred content this was actually uh, uh, this was actually put into the market to facilitate more of interaction with the public but this ai driven model this perpetuated so much of hatred content and so much of uh, different tweets this was brought on within 16 hours if you see why, why i am explaining this thing is if you see this ai driven model because of it, it doesn't have that emotional touch that human values which we emphasize in the ethics like peace harmony empathy should i say this should i say not this should i am i hurting the feelings of others am i omitting them am i considering them so without all this this ai driven learning models will definitely become a problematic issue right understood so if you see the broad difference between uh, the ai driven governance or human driven governance this is end result oriented where this is process oriented and also as we discuss this is rules based governance this is value driven governance whereas the ai driven governance we can call it as good governance model because you are strictly adhering to the principles whereas if you are having a human touch emotional touch it can be called as ethical governance right though india though india needs good governance but ethical governance is the bigger aspect we should be emphasizing right on these lines you can finish the answer also on the negative sides of this no utilization of machines or artificial intelligence you can bring in the issues of privacy lack of accountability like let's say the ai driven model has chosen this uh, this person as a beneficiary bait in uh, e tendering process let's say ai then if if there is something wrong in the process who is made accountable here you cannot make the person who is in charge like the district magistrate he says i gave it to the software the software gave it to me this is what happening in the transfers you, you might be knowing in the transfers in the college allotments everything nowadays everything is ai driven here whenever the machines are involved in the governance or administrative process the point of making one accountable to that process is again a challenge right this on this line you can finish this answer so the conclusion should be uh, ai should be you you should take the help of ai but you cannot leave the emotional touch it's not complete discussion you should take the help of ai but you cannot leave the emotions that should be the balanced approach should be there 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 will be any any time there will be a moral equilibrium moral like you cannot completely either uh, right and radical approach so ai will be there ai ai will be there for centuries to come so you cannot uh, let ai to go but having keeping this in mind you have to write uh, some conclusion like uh, there was one report from niti ayog responsible ai for all yeah. so such conclusion you can bring it making that though you utilize the uh, inputs from the ai end of the day you have to have the human touch in the governance that should be the conclusion should know where to do the exactly exactly that's right also one more point in this question the most of the ai generated models they have an algorithmic bias yeah this point you can add because for example let's say we are uh, uh, segregating population or uh, segregating data on crime the repeated crime areas or the persons or section of that society or an area where the crime is getting more and more this ai generated models 
try to tag those areas more and more despite your efforts which which will be biased again though it gives input but you cannot label based on only if you belong to some community let's say a, a, a person a, a crime is happening where out of the 10 crimes 8 crimes are from one community just because one person belonging to that community you cannot call him you cannot make him as a notorious you cannot blame him or uh, attack him as he will be criminal so such kind of algorithmic bias can be coming through the air so this point also you can add in the negatives of the air right so the second question is 1b ethics encompasses several key dimensions that are crucial in guiding individual and organizations towards morally responsible behavior explain the key dimensions of the ethics that influence human actions discuss how these dimension shape ethical decision making in the professional context so this is very direct question once you know what is ethics and what are the dimensions of ethics and how these dimensions will help in guiding one human behavior or making how he chooses to take a decision in a situation so this is a direct direct question so you have to write about the basic of ethics and relation between ethics and mor uh, morals and then different ethical dimensions like normative ethics, descriptive ethics, applied ethics, meta ethics or also you can bring some other points from consequentialism or the theory points. So you can bring these points explaining how each and every dimension is helping to guide a behavior to guide how he is taking decision. For example, let us say descriptive ethics. So descriptive ethics is understanding what is ethics or what is a value or what is the basic understanding of the ethics is descriptive ethics. So when one understands the descriptive ethics, he will get to know, the, he will get to see the ethical situation to take his, his judgment or his decision making will get improved. Right. For example, he has to know about what is truth. Once he understands what is truth or once he understands what is the peace, then he, he can understand the situation whether the peace is here or not. Whether the situation, the, they are upholding the truth or not. So that is descriptive ethics. The dimension of ethics where the descriptive ethics, that is understanding of the ethics. Whereas normative ethics is complete norm based. That is wherever the context, the, the, those ethical principles will be standard. The, those are norms. That is why it is called as normative ethics. So normative ethics, how can you apply the normative ethics? So if you see wherever the situation, like murder, killing. So this is completely immoral. Where, whatever may be the reason, this is completely immoral. So such thing is called normative ethics. Whereas descriptive ethics, if you see the difference, descriptive ethics to understand that situation, to understand that, cons uh, the, that uh, context. And applied ethics, of course, you know, the application of ethical principles again in their professionals, their industry, or they, wherever they are working. So for example, let's say, uh, one one medical profession, one doctor is there. So he he gets an a challenging situation where whether he has to go for the uh, maintaining the integrity or autonomy or professional secrecy of that patient or treatment of that patient. Like let's say a case comes where one husband comes, he is diagnosed with a gonorrhea or a sexually transmitted disease. So the doctor has a moral obligation to treat the wife. But the patient is asking, don't tell anyone. So he has to maintain the professional secrets. So this is an ethical dilemma. So here he has to maintain that secrecy, but secrecy as such, he should not tell that this person has got such disease to the outer world. But he has a, got a moral obligation that he should be telling his wife and she should also be treated along with the husband. So such such kind of scenarios. Let's say another situation where a judge judge gets to sit to hear a case. But either the victim or the other opposite person is a relative of the judge. How can he maintain that by uh, without uh, that impartiality? So such situation he should step aside and ask another judge to take over the case, or either he should transfer the case to the other bench. 
So such such dilemma or such ethical dilematic situation will require the application of applied ethics, where you are you apply the ethical principles which you have studied in the ethics or which you have learned in your professional in your administration. So such is the dimension. This applied ethics dimension will help in making his decision in a ethical perspective in a situation right so another example consequentialism this is another another dimension of the ethics you might be knowing what is consequentialism so one has to face the consequences of his decision he cannot just take the decision and say i am not I'm not at all worried about that decision consequences for example let's say uh, you can you take the example of hydra listen so hydra the, 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 uh, the principle of hydra is the restoration of the natural water bodies in the meanwhile the collateral damage is they, they are going with the uh, 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 removal of the houses here the whoever the authority who is managing the hydra they have to deal with the consequences of that it, it doesn't mean that i have took a decision and this is the outcome but i am not concerned with the consequences so here the application of ethics that is consequentialism that is whether the person has the responsibility to take the to deal with the consequences of his action to take to deal with the consequences of his decision so such knowledge gets imparted through the ethical dimension of consequentialism which will help him in dealing his decision making right so such different dimensions whatever the dimensions you have studied in the syllabus that could be bring in here with the good examples and you can finish the answer right so second question 2a it is not enough to talk about peace one must believe in it and it is not enough to believe in it one must act upon it in the present context, the major weapon industries of the developed nations are adversely influencing the continuation of number of wars for their own self-interest all around the world. What are the ethical considerations of the powerful nations in today's international arena to stop continuation of ongoing conflicts? So this question, this question is majorly regarding Gandhiji's seven sins, where the point comes commerce without morality. Right. So simply they are asking. These international organizations which are dealing with the uh, all these weapons, weapon industries, so they are more interested in making money, but they, they are not having the basic morality of promoting peace, promoting non-violence. So this is the ethical condition in this question. So you have to mention Gandhiji's seven sins, not, not all the seven sins, just seven sins saying Commerce without morality is the basic underlying theme of this question. Then you have to say why or what is the double standards these industrial, these weapon industries or international organizations are there going through. Those double standards, they, they say we are for peace. But again, they sell the all the weapons. They say they, they promote democracy. And again they go, they sell their weapons to the authoritative regimes. Right. So they they they, they promote, they, they say that we, we promote the global stability. We are for the global stability. But again, they try to make economic economic imbalances with the promotion of the war. So these are the double standards. So mention these double standards and then the demand of the question. So, what are the ethical considerations these should follow in avoiding the conflicts? So, like they have, they should have some a prescribed form, a prescribed guidelines, so that they stop continuing these conflicts. That form or that points could be so respecting the international law. So, whatever the law which uh, which strictly maintains the sale of weapons. That should be respected first. And then ethically they have to promote the virtue of, they have to respect the virtue of peace, tolerance, humanity, love. Harmony. Harmony. Yeah. Overall this, 
they have to promote the human rights they have to emphasize the human rights as the primary goal rather than their commercial thing along with this the major important point is they have to promote they have to keep the sovereignty of the nation or sovereignty of the body as a primary thing rather than the this promoting international conflicts or they have to stop interfering in the internal conflicts of the nation they have to allow those countries to solve their own problems or without they should not be doing will be supplying arms to solve the conflict they have to promote the role of diplomacy than the arms right they have to promote the principle of disarmament right so with all these basic unless unless all these principles are ticked all these are ticked then only they have to promote their or they have to go for the weapon say or they, their interests of their industry unless these are not checked without or bypassing all this directly going for the weapon sale is again going for the double standards right so very question you can write you can start with the gandhi ji seven by introducing at gandhi seven sins commerce with the morality and why why or how these industries are going with the double standards and then you can come what could be done like we discuss international laws human rights virtues right you can conclude like this and in the end you can say you cannot leave our social responsibility you can bring in the social responsibility here you cannot uh, you cannot only promote the commerce but whatever the industry they have the basic social responsibility as a global citizen in in that line you can conclude the answer right one more thing to add uh, can we add india's take on uh, israel and uh, palestine conflict because you are speaking on on peace but he is not acting on you can add you can add an example yeah then next question to be global warming and climate change are the outcomes of human greed in the name of development indicating the direction in which extinction of the organism including organisms including human beings is heading towards loss of life on earth how do you put an end to this to protect life and bring equilibrium between society and the environment so this is again one of the gandhi ji seven sins Enough to yeah, you can you can start with that quote of Gandhi ji, and then you can also write the point of Gandhi ji seven sins where the pleasure without conscience, right? Pleasure without conscience. So, as our friend quoted, that is the quote you can start with where the earth has everything for every man's need, but not for but not for greed. So here, introducing uh, introducing with these lines, you have to mention why. this situation is leading to the extinction of organisms or whether or why it is hurting the environment because you can write in the points like uh, lack of respect for environment right egocentric attitude egocentric means making human as a center for the environment egocentric attitude that is feeling humans are the humans are the superior to the other organisms you can bring in this or you can uh, mention unsustainability or lack of lack of specific respect towards towards our respect towards the future generation that is utilization of resources very imprudent utilization of resources where there is no concept of keeping the future in the mind so these things you can add here these points you bring to a point uh, bring to a conclusion that these are leading to a situation where the extinction of other living organisms along with the humans is happening and then you continue with how can you protect or how can you change how do you want to end this phenomenon here you can bring the principles of sustainability sustainable developmental goals whatever they, those principles you can bring here and then you have to promote responsible production and responsible consumption so the those points you can add here and as we discussed that there there was egocentric attitude here you can mention ecocentric attitude eco ecocentric attitude and you have to promote the awareness of environmental ethics 
promotion of the principle of environmentalism so these principles they emphasize on efficient usage of resources resource efficiency and also you have to bring, you can mention corporate social responsibility here where the industries or the developmental activities which are being done be they are indirectly causing either afforestation sorry deforestation or polluting activities so that should be balanced again with the corporate social responsibility activities so how much amount of the forest you are destroying you have to plant such area you, you have to take restoration. restoration of such area such amount of area similarly you have to be responsible in discharging effluents you have to be responsible in tackling the or uh, 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 causing the pollution so such such activities of such activities of corporate social responsibility can be mentioned here and then at the individual level you you can mention the mor moral values should be promoted like personal hygiene or respect towards environment you can also bring in the point of fundamental duties here so all these points you can club in to make one becomes responsible towards the environment thereby ending whatever the phenomenon or what is happening here yeah you can add today there was something in newspaper like green washing that also you can such points you can add and at a global level we can add a common but different responsibility exactly you can add you can add those things so understood the theme of that question right then we'll move to the three so given below are the three quotations of great thinkers what do each of these quotations convey to you in the present context so the first one learn everything that is good from others but bring it in and in your own way absorb it do not become others so here this quotation is given by swami vivekananda so here this quotation emphasizes if you see the syllabus this is this belongs to the syllabus where role of family society or learnings from the leaders this this from there this question has been taken contribution sir right so if you see the question as such this emphasizes the selective learning not just a passive learning selective learning so the selective what the selective learning you have to learn everything you have to take or you have to observe the you have to take the information everything which you are put at but you have to filter it out which suits to your needs which suits to your moral values which suits to your culture, cultural ethos so such kind of learning should be happening rather than simply mimicking whatever is happening in the world so this is very very good question because you can bring in fomo like fear of missing out this fomo this point also you can mention here because people nowadays are just most of the people are trying to imitate the other person or trying to see uh, see the other person what he is doing and try uh, for example be it the social media revolution like our instagram reels this form of this thing you can bring in here because people are not really taking what is below what is exactly the information whether or the thing whether that is fitting to his own moral values or whether that is fitting to his cultural ethos for example let's say uh you, you can quote number of examples in this question like let's say the westernization is very good example or else the culinary habits can be very good example where people without i mean uh without any consideration of the moral values of, for his cultural ethos they try to mimic mimic in dressing styles or mimic in eating habits alcohol consumption so back days alcohol consumption this this was very restricted and that was what that was seen as a sin but what happened now social drinking is very acceptable nowadays right you you are you are forgetting your moral values you know that alcohol consumption is definitely a wrong thing but just to impress others or just to become the member of that society or member of that group you are you are losing yourself you are mimicking them that is you are learning from the others as it is without filtering the content right so this is one another example where you can see also if you see the major policies 
major things like polygamy so polygamy this was acceptable before before or polygamy is acceptable in some cultural societies but when come to the indian standards the polygamy is not acceptable to our cultural ethos right so this though you try to mimic there you try to bring in this can be brought in in our uh, different uh, like what you call this uh, trend is going on like situationships relationships dinks so all these are you are just trying to mimic the global thing you are trying to mimic the global population without following your basic moral values right such examples you can bring in here like abortion abortion case so abortion case where i think uh, what's her name sabita right did you come across that case netherlands netherlands yes not delhi netherlands yes yeah sorry so sabita yes yes so what happened in netherlands abortion is is prohibited despite it is posing threat for the mother it is prohibited because the child rights are they also given equal weight there but if you see without having i mean you cannot completely limit that okay abortion they are they are prohibiting because they are giving equal rights so that is a good thing you cannot simply mimic that without having without taking basic team or basic understanding of the situation you cannot blindly follow whatever is happening around you so this is one another example we should have more discussion to what that when what not. exactly so as i was saying so moral wisdom should be there the moral wisdom that helps in selective learning that should be followed so this helps in learning good things developing specific virtues helping helping in the ethical dilemmas or just not just blindly following others there is one quote by uh, there is one quote be yourself everyone else is taken you can end in the conclusion with such quotes be yourself everyone else is taken very fresh quote i guess with such quotes you can conclude the answer so the basic theme of the question is you have to learn but you have to do selective learning on individual level you can quote some examples on the policy level you can quote some examples then 3b so 3b is faith is of no avail in the absence of strength faith and strength both are essential to accomplish any great work so this quote is given by sardar patel so generally this quote uh, uh, this quote brings in the point that you have to have both your willingness and power to execute things you have to be morally mentally strong right and also you should be having that power to execute things so faith is believing in yourself that i can do this and strength is you should be having that be it mental or emotional so only faith having faith that cannot make the things get done to the fullest potential or only having strength that will not help you you have to have both to to, to realize the fullest potential for example let's say an officer is there an officer is there he believes in being honest he believes not doing corruption but he doesn't have that moral strength to execute in his in administration he believes in it but he doesn't have strength because he is afraid of the system or he became the spoke of that system so in such conditions even though he believes to bring in corrupt pre governance he cannot bring it because he doesn't have the strength he doesn't have the emotional will right so such situation can be quoted an example where only faith will not serve the complete purpose let's say your example you are prepared, you faith is you believe that you will crack the exam but strength is you should be having that emotional strength physical strength you have to sit sit for long number of hours you should balance your all the emotional trauma which you are going through all these 15 16 months so without all this your commitment to the exam your sincerity to the exam or your emotional balance though you believe in yourself you cannot realize the success so this is another this is another example so where 
according to patel he says that though you have the will you should be having enough more uh, enough strength be it emotional or physical resources or whatever to get the things done to get the things accomplished for example if you see on the bigger scale let's say independence movement gandhi ji and other national leaders believe that we we will achieve independence but unless they had mass following unless they had the large number of people believing in the principle of their non violence or believing in the principle of those nationalist nationalist leaders ideals they couldn't achieve the final success so they have to believe in the process along with that they have to have the resources similarly you can you can also quote the example of unification of india for the sardar patels so he had a will to unite india all the princely states along with the, with the, he had emotional will he had support of army he had support of police system he had support of the public along with as both are combined here the task of unification of india has has been completed so similarly number of bureaucracy examples let's say yes any example any strong uh, good examples you can put like kiran bedi there is one manipur officer uh, armstrong pomme yeah he he constructed a road he constructed a road by uh, by um, uh, by making funds from the public i mean he did, he didn't wait for the government to uh, government to release the funds or uh, he, he he didn't leave that he had a faith he had a vision to that this people should have a good road this should people have good accessibility for that he he let his own will or he he brought that will into the public by making them realize that this could be done and he has accomplished that if if just having that vision without those resources he couldn't have done that so the, such kind of examples you can quote here so the simple the statement explains is that you should have the will and you should have the resources or you should believe in the system and you should believe in your own values to get the things accomplished right so this is the basic theme of this question right then 3c in law a man is guilty when he violates the right of others in ethics he is guilty if only thinks of doing so immanuel kant so this is just like the first question we were discussing like deontology and uh, uh, teleontology or you can bring in this question like uh, what you call it it ethical outcome or legal outcome or ethics versus law right so what does the law says if this person has uh, i mean if this person has done this whether this is legal or not if it is not legal he has committed a crime but what does ethics decide ethics decide is whether this person is doing that work ethically or not so simply to divide for example let's say uh, examples for election promises so election promises they are not legal as such but once they are promising something to do an activity to get their things done and then leaving those promises that is unethical right so the difference between legal or ethics or the law and ethics is the main theme of this question that is the kant says that not just doing a wrong thing is bad but thinking is also like thinking to do bad is also a wrong thing so that is what kant means you can also uh, quote an example of tax avoidance so tax avoidance is legal you take the loopholes of the system and you avoid the tax but ethically you know that you are doing a wrong thing right so so this this court clearly defines the difference between legal responsibility and ethical responsibility whether you are responsible only according to the laws only according to the rules or whether you are responsible according to the moral values so such theme is demanded by this question so if you see in the legal responsibility act should be done whether in the ethical responsibility the intent is enough your thought is enough act versus intent this is one other another point sir so can we add the dumbies among these yes you can add 
you can add like while concluding the answer you can bring in that point and you can conclude that that could be done this 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 question is also emphasizes on one point where it it says character is more important than the consequences of that you have to maintain pure character only then you can you can do better i mean you can do the acts without which which do not violate the law so character is more important importance of the character this question emphasizes are there any question so simply this question says that question deals with the basic prime area where the difference between legal responsibility and ethical responsibility legal responsibility is you act on a wrong doings if you act in a wrong way for that you take a legal responsibility whereas here in ethical responsibility do, uh, thinking or having a thought or having an intent of doing wrong thing is also bad so that is the main principle of kantian ethics so that this is what he emphasizes right understood next for a the concept of just and unjust is contextual what was just a year back may turn out to be unjust in today's concept context changing context should be constantly under scrutiny to prevent miscarriage of justice examine the above statement with suitable examples so what does this what does this question says the question primarily brings in a point where it says justice is very dynamic concept justice is very dynamic concept it cannot stay static it cannot stay static justice is always a contextual concept so it it moves or it changes along it changes along with the time culture the uh, uh, the scenario environment right so this is the prime theme of this question so this question says as the time changes the value system also changes right if you see for example dowry dowry which was accepted back then 200 back years ago it was it was societally accepted but now this is illegal this is a crime now so which was supposed to be that was a justifiable thing back days in 200 years back or 100 years back now this is that the layer of justice has been changed right similarly slavery apartheid apartheidism so that was acceptable long back but now the slavery is completely abolished so the the principle of the the time changed the value system here the acceptance of slavery or as a justice okay this is this can be accepted this is not against the justice this is this is not against the law that has changed over the time the time has changed the value system of that society right similarly you can see all these uh, social evils like sati devadasi systems right which were accepted back then untouchability that was supposed to be that, that was justifiable back there but now it is not acceptable right so in the recent example and you can bring in the example of data privacy laws where back then government can intrude into private details also but now that citizens are empowered with they have the right to have their own privacy so which which was okay then back there now it is not okay the principle of justice has been changed right so all this all these examples with these all these with example you can say that justice is a dynamic concept which changes with the time situation culture values or whatever so this justice will keep changing according to the time it should adapt yes it should adapt so this so with these examples you can write this answer then for b mindless addiction to the form ignoring the substance of the matter results in rendering of injustice a perceptive civil servant is one who ignores such literalness and carries out the true intent examine the above statement with suitable illustrations 
again this question is again like the previous other questions we discussed that is this form is procedure rule where a structure is the outcome that is people believe being only on the rules only on the procedures they miss out what the true intent was they miss out what the true substance was so this is what the question says mindless addiction to the form are ignoring the substance of the matter results in rendering of the injustice let's say simple examples with with daily you choose examples are untai mere cinema lo choose examples are untai just meer subject na link chesukodam let's say koncham serious inch fun mode la kada let's say uh chiranjeevi cinema undi kada so he comes with naaku treatment cheyandi nu form fill up chesukoram na treatment cheyadam important akka form fill up chesko raavadam anedi ante procedure rule no without ni ni form fill up chesukoraana ni treatment cheyandi so simple a example ikkada pettesi ichchu so here addiction to the form and addiction to the rules addiction to the procedures this misses out the misses out the substance artham ayyo so so just like we were discussing the form this this emphasizes the procedural correctness it emphasizes the rules it emphasizes the criteria procedures orders all these come under the form where a substance this emphasizes on the principle of intent outcome what is the actual purpose of governance what is the actual intent of the constitution right what, what should be the basic intent of the administrator that should be the that will come under the substance let's say for example oka rochar grievance letter san jarutunnam any telugu telen vale avale kada anyone right so let's say grievance letter san jarutunnam so grievance letter san jarutundi oka avade ikkada paapam mussula avadi chaa dooram nunchi vachindi nuve grievance letter 5 to 7 pm ani pettavu nu as a district magistrate avade 7 5 ki vachindi avade ke endu ledu abasalu vattu kaalu ala hotel vattu 7 5 ki vachindi aa ledu ledu nu vellipo nu malli next monday ra ante you follow the rule in 5 to 7 in grievance isukunta nu 7 tarvata vachavu but what is the real intent of governance here ha ah, well sir you are missing that you are following the rules but you are not uh, uh, you are you are not thinking about the basic welfare of the people so such examples can be brought in here that is strict adherence to the only the procedure only rules will miss out the intent right so addictions to the form positives will be but uh, if you say why this addiction should be there in a pros cons log pettukunte that will be rules based ante discretion is there so kachchana criteria follow kavali kachchana rules follow kavali so alantappudu em aitundante resource utilization efficient untadi ide example e isukundam so 7 5 ki vachindani nu chusa manchi vishayam so alage oka 50 mandi vacharu next week నీకు ఇంపార్టెంట్ మీటింగ్ ఉంది వాట్ హ్యాపెన్స్ రైట్ సో దిస్ కుడ్ బి ప్రోస్ అండ్ కాన్స్ ఆఫ్ దట్ బట్ యూ యూ హ్యావ్ యూ షుడ్ హ్యావ్ దట్ బేసిక్ అండర్స్టాండింగ్ ఆఫ్ ఎథిక్స్ వేర్ యూ యూ షుడ్ టేక్ ఎ బ్యాలెన్స్ డెసిషన్ సో బట్ ఓవరాల్ ఈ క్వశ్చన్ ఇంటెంట్ ఏంటంటే యూ షుడ్ నాట్ ఓవర్ ఎంఫసైజ్ ఆన్ ద ఫామ్ యూ షుడ్ నాట్ ఓవర్ ఎంఫసైజ్ ఆన్ ద ప్రొసీజర్ యూ షుడ్ హ్యావ్ ద ఇంటెంట్ యూ షుడ్ హ్యావ్ ద అవుట్ కమ్ యూ షుడ్ హ్యావ్ ద distributive justice welfare justice this should be the primary intent of the administrator that should be brought in in this question what would you do sir like if you come back there? i i'll have my juniors joint collector untaru whatever nin naak important undu nin choose ase i'll go with the work joint collector untaru if they cannot solve bring it bring them back to me back after by my meeting you can do that delegation anta kada సేమ్ ఈ క్వశ్చన్ కి యూ కెన్ ఆల్సో కోట్ ద ఎగ్జాంపుల్ లైక్ వీ వర్ డిస్కసింగ్ సో ఫస్ట్ క్వశ్చన్ లో డిస్కస్ చేస్తున్నాం కదా డిజాస్టర్ రిలీఫ్ మేనేజ్మెంట్ వాడు వచ్చాడు వాడి దగ్గర పేపర్స్ లేవు కానీ వాడు 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 నిజంగా వాడు ఇల్లు మునిగిపోయింది వాడికి రైస్ కావాలి అని నువ్వు నువ్వు అసలు ఈ ఊరు వాడు నమ్మకం ఏంటి వెళ్ళిపో అంటే వాడి పేపర్ లేవు సో యూ షుడ్ నాట్ ఓవర్ ఎంఫసైజ్ ఆన్ దట్ ఫామ్ యూ షుడ్ యూ షుడ్ 
emphasize on the substance, you should emphasize on the outcome, intent, right? Such examples can be brought in here. Uh, there is one quote you can add this the strictest law sometimes becomes the severest injustice. St strictest laws sometimes become the severest injustice. So, such quotation so you can end up. It's not under manam example words and kuna total manam question as such 150 words. All of hmm. Okay. So ah, static part to this question. Whatever put manam you which are even one static part of manam chapter on manam. Ah, static not just example, static parts chest to ne. Mention just for example in the starting of deontology, teleontology, consequentialism, virtues. Code based questions. Code based questions. We can mention just like we mentioned. Just like we mentioned. You can be good. Deontology and DNT. Now, how come someone else needs rule follow it? Teleontology and DNT. You will align it. Manchi Saragali. Principle of utilitarianism. Here the principle of it is maximization of benefits. Maximization of benefits. So such a points of these questions, examples, real life examples. And answer format around you know, once you start writing, you'll and GS not as many for the Nante Elaja Palamika specific ante either them how ante separate the one chapter in a claim under. Same question demand to question demand entity. A demand theme and the part of our syllabus is that syllabus is this one. Our syllabus is this one. Which is principle are that one? That is theory are that one. Which concept are that one? A concept, man, we answer law, man, mention just now only. So, a a a mention just a concept me question in just a example. I am doing that there. So, this example says that this thing. And then we conclude. So, Ilam Peng Lai. So, all are going to answer. So. Uh, you, uh, not just to manam okay, examples 1, 2, 3, 4, all are going to play for the manam question theme and a question theme where this is related to that syllabus in that topic what ethical principles are involved or uh, what ethical terms can be brought in here what ethical concepts can be brought in here and for those justifying with the examples right uh, please sir, manakku, prepare this sir I will give you the answer. Mutam, e class I will give you the answer. PDF is ready. I will discuss in the sense that I will tell you. I will tell you. Sure. Next, 5A. So, the code of conduct. And code of ethics are the sources of guidance in the public administration. There is code of conduct already in operation, whereas code of ethics is not yet put in place. Suggest suitable model for code of ethics to maintain integrity, probity, and transparency in governance. So, we are not put in questions. These are open ended questions. So, you have to suggest a model. So, you have to bring in all the civil services values or that could be fit in. In the code of ethics. So, what does this question demand? The question says that there is code of conduct which is already there, but code of ethics is not there. So, what is code of conduct? This is an external restriction, external restriction on bureaucracy, which says that you have to conduct like this, you have to dress like this, you have to talk like this, right? You 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 cannot uh, uh, make derogatory comments, or you you have to follow these rules. You have to maintain such work environment. So, this code of conduct which is prescribed by the bureaucracy. Whereas, code of ethics will be internal. So, my moral values, my civil service values, I have to outline to oka, oka code or what, oka guidelines to suggest code of ethics. 
For example, what will you do to be honest? What will you do to being transparent? What will you do to being accountable? How will you take the responsibility? How will be you will be impartial? How will you maintain the objectivity? So this is an open-ended question where you can bring in each civil service value and then quote how you gonna do that? How you gonna be rational uh, making choices? Or how you gonna be rational making decisions? How you can be utilizing efficient use of resources or maximizing your efficiency? So such thing one by one point draws to elan to open ended questions, right? Yeah, you can bring in all our principles. Selflessness, honesty, openness, objectivity. So such principles can be brought in here. So based on these principles, so how can you promote honesty? I will maintain my own values or uh, for example code of ethics is to now. So we will either what we internal in JH1 frequently emphasizing on the bureaucratic values, frequently emphasizing on the civil services values or else periodical ga, they, have, they, they will be brought in to the learning centers to refresh their values. Right. Okay, one to one day cultivate jada. Uh, characteristic method where one is following strict ideas that should that those should be appreciated or where where one is not following so where is one is not following the principle of honesty those should be punished right so such different and my principles and how you how you will implement them how you will inculcate them either by by innate methods or by external methods again right so ila idi you know, open ended right question. So, there is one, I want to put one more example. So, there is one IS officer in Tamil Nadu where in every year he just uh, displays his asset right. to the government. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Example you can quote under how how you want to show be your honest. Yeah. Right, that, that point you can bring in here. So, the simple, you, can, uh, you have this question. Firstly, you have to mention about what is the code of conduct and what is code of ethics. Wow, what is the importance of it? And then you have to bring in. Uh, this could, the select features of code of conduct like not exactly the points or how the code of conducts, conduct is helping in the administration and then the, uh, the next uh, point should be the need of code of ethics and what and the final point would be what would be the model you are suggesting for the code of ethics for each point like be the, the like she said the no law principles those can be brought in so next question, 5B, the soul of new law, Bharatiya Nyaya Samhita, BNS, is a justice, equality and impartiality based on Indian culture and ethos. Discuss this in the light of major shift from a doctrine of punishment to justice in present judicial system. So, this question now, let's say, uh, Mipel, Bargo. But for example, this question comes directly in GS2. Your answer style would be uh, the question would be what was the major change? So, in the Muni Dunini, Dunin and Jeprafa, all GS2. Ikada ethics law, you bring in the ethical terms or ethical concepts here, justifying that change or, or uh, uh, matter, emphasizing that change. So, all are asked. For example, GS2 asked. So, in the IPC, IPC loopholes, BNS and reform, BNS is exactly the same change. Way forward, it has to be evolved with the time. It concludes the answer. Whereas, you have to bring in ethical terms or ethical concepts like why BNS has changed or why IPC has come to BNS because there is a, they, they emphasized on bringing this reformative justice, right? Re, uh, restorative justice. Whereas in IPC it was retributive justice. There it was mostly on punishment. But here it was mo it, it is morely emphasizing on victim centric approach. Right? Here you bring in the concepts like dharma. You, you bring in the concepts like collaboration or societal coherence. Where your main intention of BNS is not just about the punishing. But promotion of peace in the society, promotion of truth in the society, upholding the values of justice. So, Allah asks one more answer. Man. GS two answer is the last one. Just you, 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 you,
so as we were discussing so this bns has brought in the change from retributive justice to the restorative justice right so earlier the punishment was the major theme major theme but now this bns is emphasizing victim centric approach so also here the bns is also emphasizing how i mean you can bring in the quote of gandhi ji here where he says hate the sin not sinner hate the sin not sinner so this bns tells that though the offender or though who is a culprit or we have to see the circumstances where why this fellow had to commit that crime and we have to work on that too, not just about punishing him you have to you have to deliver the justice you have to restore or rehabilitate the offender reform and transform reform and transform yes so this is the basic soul of the bns rather than the ipc which was colonial the only intent was there to restrict the crime you have to stop the crime be it harsh measure or be it in some or other way you have to stop the crime but here you have to stop the crime both curative and preventive aspects you have to give the justice for this crime happened also you have to think in a way where why this crime has happened and what could be done for the offender along with the victim so such is the major theme also there is one major shift here there is a point of proportional increment of punishment in bns when compared to the ipc De depending upon the severity of the crime proportional increment of punishment and the severity of crime but not just like e crime yes ada in e e punishment even nan kaakunda a crime lo kuda severity ni batti proportional increment of that punishment right also as we were discussing you have this bns mentions fair trial which is whole concept of dharma maintaining the principle of dharma fair trial ki chance is the bns also as we were discussing this is victim central approach victim centered approach this emphasizes the principle of compassion this emphasizes the principle of empathy that is administrator being in the shoes of the victim empathy also administrator being in the shoes of offender why i had to commit this crime what made me to commit this crime so this bns is emphasizing the principles of compassion empathy right so e point ilante points is kosam manam ethics answer and also for example uh, bns has a one point where there is repeal of sedition sedition laws repeal yes sir so this this is again example where it uh, ante uh, change change from ipc to bns ante akkade em chese vallu to uh, colonial hango colonial legacy that is you are separate me am separate like you, you he has to stop the crime ikkada ala gaakunda alanti laws em lekunda ante he is also he, he also belongs to this group he also belongs to this nation he is a citizen of our nation yes yes so why ante man be he being member of our society what made him to do the crime yes community service yes community service that point also could be mentioned so this bns promotes the concept of societal fabric societal fabric so in the as we as we discussed in the conclusion you can conclude by hate the sin not the sinner quote right so these are the major uh, changes which emphasize the soul of the bns in indian culture and value system an equal opportunity has been provided irrespective of gender identity the number of women in public service has been steadily increasing over the years examine the gender specific challenges faced by female public servants and suggest suitable measures to increase their efficiency in discharging their duties and maintaining high standards of probity so this direct question so women topic anedi you you meeru 
ఎప్పుడు యూపీఎస్సీ ఎగ్జామ్ ప్రిపేర్ అవుతుంటే బీట్ స్టేట్ ఎగ్జామ్ ఆల్సో ఆర్ యూపీఎస్సీ ఎగ్జామ్ ఉమెన్ టాపిక్ అనేది చాలా ఇంపార్టెంట్ టాపిక్ అది మీకు ఖచ్చితంగా అట్లీస్ట్ మీరు రాసే ఆ ఫైవ్ సిక్స్ పేపర్స్ లో రెండు పేపర్స్ లో ఎక్కడ తగిలితే బీట్ ఎస్ఏ బీట్ జిఎస్ వన్ సొసైటీ బీట్ జిఎస్ టూ ప్రమోషన్ ఆఫ్ వెల్ఫేర్ రైట్ బీట్ జిఎస్ త్రీ ఇంటర్నల్ మీన్ సైబర్ సెక్యూరిటీలో కూడా తీసుకురావచ్చు జిఎస్ ఫోర్ సో ఖచ్చితంగా ఉమెన్ టాపిక్ అనేది ఖచ్చితంగా వస్తుంది ఎవ్రీ ఇయర్ వస్తుంది ఎక్కడ ఒక దగ్గర వస్తుంది సో ఇటువంటి టాపిక్స్ నుంచి ఎటువంటి క్వశ్చన్స్ వచ్చినా మీరు మిస్ చేయకూడదు సో అలా అలాంటివి గుర్తుపెట్టుకోండి సో ఫ్రీక్వెంట్లీ మీరు మీరు క్వశ్చన్ పేపర్స్ లాస్ట్ ఫైవ్ ఇయర్స్ సిక్స్ ఇయర్స్ క్వశ్చన్ పేపర్స్ తీసి మీరు అనలైజ్ చేస్తుంటే యూ విల్ యూ విల్ సీ వాట్ ఫ్రీక్వెంట్ థీమ్స్ ఆర్ కానీ ఆ థీమ్స్ ఎప్పుడు మిస్ చేయకూడదు సో దోస్ ఆర్ లైక్ నీకు ముందే చెప్తున్నాడు నేను ఇక్కడి నుంచి క్వశ్చన్ ఇస్తున్నా యూ బీ రెడీ అని అటువంటి మనం మిస్ మిస్ చేయకూడదు మిస్ చేయకూడదు ఇన్ ద సెన్స్ మై పాయింట్ ఈస్ యూ యూ విల్ రైట్ ద క్వశ్చన్ బట్ యూ హ్యావ్ టు రైట్ ఇట్ వెరీ ఎఫిషియంట్ ఇట్స్ లైక్ యూ హ్యావ్ టు స్కోర్ మ్యాక్సిమం ఆఫ్ దట్ క్వశ్చన్ so you, for example if you are dealing with the women as you should be ready with the stats you should be ready with the quotes but the frequent teams align as coach tappa em led see see my my whole point okate cheptanu no one is i mean no one came here to do phd evaru evaru nachinara adi gurtu pettukondi see respect the demand of the exam what is upsc asking you am i being ready for that and am i delivering that ante మనం ఇప్పుడు ఇక్కడ ఏదో మనం ఇందులో పిహెచ్డి చేసేసి లేదా పాలిటీ గొప్పగా చదివేసి ఒక సిక్స్ ఇయర్స్ చదివేస్తే వాళ్ళ ఏం రావడం ఏం లాభం లేదు పాలిటీలో ఎగ్జామ్ లో ఎయిటీన్ పిలిన్స్ క్వశ్చన్స్ వస్తే ఎయిటీన్ ఎయిటీన్ కరెక్ట్ పెట్టామా జిఎస్టీలో కరెక్ట్ గా రాసామా మన మన మనం అందు నుంచి నాలెడ్జ్ చేసుకున్నాం అది మనం కరెక్ట్ గా ఇంప్లిమెంట్ చేసుకుంటున్నాం అది ఉంది అండి రైట్ సో డిమాండ్ ఆఫ్ ద ఎగ్జామ్ ని రెస్పెక్ట్ చేయండి దానికోసం ఏం ఎలా అయినా మీరు ప్రిపేర్ అవ్వండి దర్ ఇస్ నో షేమ్ ఇన్ దట్ రైట్ సో కమింగ్ టు దిస్ క్వశ్చన్ so this question asks what are the gender specific challenges faced by female public servants and measures to increase their efficiency and discharging their duties so what are the gender specific challenges if you generally observe mostly our cultural ethos or our cultural or society upbringing we we are brought up with the paternalistic attitude where we emphasize more i mean uh, we we emphasize the Uh, what do you call it? Uh, the the principle of where the uh, male or men are given more importance than the women. paternalistic mindset for example even are yeah sir madam hmm. that is one very good example and real life example is going to so man it lo most let's say మోస్ట్ ఆఫ్ అవర్ పేరెంట్స్ అంటే అమ్మ కూడా వర్క్ చేస్తా ఉంటారు బట్ హౌ మెనీ టైమ్స్ ఇట్ బిజీ ఆర్ ఫాదర్ వాషింగ్ ప్లేట్స్ సో అంటే ఇట్స్ ఐఎమ్ నాట్ అబౌట్ సేయింగ్ దిట్ ఈస్ రైట్ ఆర్ రాంగ్ బట్ వీ ఆర్ వీ ఆర్ బ్రాట్ అప్ విత్ దట్ కల్చర్ దట్ కల్చరల్ ఎత్ వీ ఆర్ బ్రాట్ అప్ విత్ దట్ సొసైటీల్ ఆఫ్ బ్రింగింగ్ వేర్ వీ 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 ఇన్హరెంట్లీ హ్యావ్ దట్ పెటర్నలిస్టిక్ మైండ్ సెట్ వీ యాక్సెప్ట్ యాజ్ ఇట్ దిట్ ఈస్ నాట్ రాంగ్ సచ్ సచ్ cultural ethos are such cultural values are being embedded in our upbringing so the other challenge women face is proxy representation in public life so though many elected representatives are women they are just for the name sake the entire drama or entire thing will be run by his or her husband or her father so the proxy representation only for signature thing only for attendance thing they will put up the front face her as a front face pati panchayat yes pati panchayat is very good example even even in the bureaucracy such things are happening even in bureaucracy not just about elected representatives you'll get to know one once you come into the system and we also have glass ceiling uh, exactly glass ceiling so glass ceiling is very, very good point where the, in in the, in case of promotions in case of transfers you you keep your limit that is uh, you keep in mind okay. they are not given enough representation women are not given enough adequate opportunities so such such thing is called as glass ceiling so that is another important point and the other uh, challenge where women face is 
they uh, they do not have gender sensitive work environment let's say uh, for menstruation either for the menstruation or if, if they uh, uh, when a woman gets uh, becomes pregnant there is no gender sensitive environment for them so such is the under challenge faced by the women at the workplace and of course the harassment be it physical harassment sexual harassment mental harassment right and then lack of gender sensitive amenities 99% of the offices do not have the crisp facilities or uh, uh, separate breastfeeding rooms or dress changing rooms or in even in, in some some cases they do not have separate toilets also yes yes so these are the some of the challenges where women face in the public life women face in the being in the public administration so these are the different challenges also one example you can quote where uh, some some works are not being allotted, allotted to the women citing their physical capacity to do those works so such, such is the uh, these are the different challenges where women face in the administration women face in the public life for this how how all this could be changed or how uh, or what are the suitable measures to increase their efficiency or to uh, help them in discharging the duties is gender education behavioral change that should be starting right right from the school and specifically as we discussed they have to be provided amenities the harassment zero tolerance against the harassments you have to make icc internal complaint committee mandatory that has to be legalized that has to be that has to given sufficient powers for acting right and you have and, and you have to bring in the flexible working hours for the women flexible working hours for the women who are going through menstruation or who are going through the pregnancy so such such gender sensitive policies should be brought in and of course you have to do gender auditing for your glass ceiling frequent gender auditing to be done once you conduct the gender auditing you will get to know how much representation is being given to the women in as such in different scenarios so these are the different measures along with this you can add number of points so all these measures will help in bridging the gap or this will help in increasing the efficiency of participation of the women in the public life right so the last question mission karma yogi is aiming for maintaining very high standard of conduct and behavior to ensure efficiency for serving citizens and in, and in turn developing oneself how will this scheme empower civil servants in enhancing the productive efficiency and delivering the services at grassroots levels so mission karma yogi so this is an important question for your gs2 also so mission karma yogi as such you see in uh, ethics so the, yes yes exactly so this emphasizes that point of change from rules based governance to role based governance not just following the rules you have a particular role, role to play right you 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 are given a particular task or particular uh, work to get the outcome not just to follow the rules so this this principle is being emphasized in the mission karma yogi so for this you have to mention the six pillars of that uh, mission karma yogi either if it's 150 words no need to mention all those six pillars or just mention the mission karma yogi follow six pillar approach whereby we mention what are the points now we discuss so this mission karma yogi this emphasizes on continuous learning so this there will be periodical workshops periodical learning platforms so the officer or the administrator who is there he has to learn period he has to be in continuous learning process this principle is being emphasized in the mission karma yogi this continuous learning how this how, how, how will it help this will increase the efficiency this will increase the skills this will upgrade the skills according to the time according to the changing trends right 
so continuous learning will be there and then there will be continuous workshops on emphasizing or inculcating the civil services values all the time right also this has got igot which emphasizes the principle of democratized learning decentralized learning that is one can participate at any place one can participate uh, uh, i mean removing the uh, the barrier of accessibility so this principle of mission karma yogi promotes the democratization of learning which again increases its skills and again increases the efficiency mission karma yogi also promotes both i mean this balances both on site learning and off site learning so what is on site and off site learning not just sitting in the classroom or not just sitting in the conference room but this promotes learning in the field activities the administrator going to the field learning there interacting with the public understanding their problems all these principles this all these principles are put in the mission karma yogi so once the administrator understand the grassroot requirements grassroot challenges or what the people really want and what are the problems really people face by uh, by them so this mission karma yogi will helps in balancing both on site learning and also off site learning thereby it improves its efficiency and also the service provision and also this mission karma yogi has a one point where there will be periodic assessment of his skills periodic assessment where, where the periodic how, how does this periodic assessment will help this helps in understanding his own by by himself he understand where he stands where he has to improve where he has to work upon along with this the government will know on a larger basis where the government has to instill more concepts of more uh, learning or what had to be done so these principles come under the mission karma yogi also the mission karma yogi emphasizes the service a time bound service delivery time bound service delivery this time what does this time bound service delivery does just like civilian charter so this creates the principle of accountability on the administrator so whatever the work he is accountable for this brings in the responsibility that i have to do this work within this stipulated time so this principle of time bound service delivery is being emphasized in the mission karma yogi in every activity and also mission karma yogi also has a one point of promotion of collaborative work among different sections and different hierarchies so different sections is say for example health department water and uh, sanitation department child women and child uh, child department so once they are mixed and then the workshop be conducted over all this by mixing them ardham ayina but for example oka oor lo village oka village ki ellaru so oka village lo aa village health nutrition sanitation ee moodu ni address cheyali so appudu just health vaallatho maatladakunda or just ఆ పంచాయతీ రాజ్ ఆ శానిటేషన్ వాళ్ళతో మాట్లాడుకుంటా జస్ట్ అంగన్వాడీ వాళ్ళతో మాట్లాడుకుంటా ముగ్గురిని తీసుకొని వచ్చి ముగ్గురిని ఎవరి ఐడియాస్ వాళ్ళకి ఎక్స్చేంజ్ చేయించి ఒక కామన్ ప్లాన్ ఇచ్చి సో ఈ రోజు శానిటేషన్ గురించి మీరు వర్క్ చేయండి ఈ రోజు ఇక్కడ తీసుకొని వచ్చి ఈ మదర్స్ ని తీసుకొని వచ్చి వీళ్ళకి న్యూట్రిషన్ గురించి ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ చేయండి ఈ రోజు వీళ్ళకి ఈ న్యూట్రిషన్ కాంపనెంట్ ఇవ్వండి ఇక్కడికి వచ్చిన వాళ్ళకి ఈ మెడిసిన్స్ ఈ వ్యాక్సిన్స్ ఇవ్వండి ఇక్కడ హెల్త్ ఎడ్యుకేషన్ చేయండి so integrating the approaches or integrating the different sectors of the governance this is also one of the principle of mission karma yogi there is a collaborative approach gatishakti yes gatishakti model right sir gatishakti model kuda teesukochu but specifically manam deenni ante gatishakti ante bore ila vastadu kada transportation ala vastadu kada ala gaakunda collaborate ante different sectors ni involve cheyadam oka oka program ante కాంప్రహెన్సివ్ అప్రోచ్ కోసం కొలాబరేటివ్ అప్రోచ్ కోసం అంటే అంటే నాట్ జస్ట్ ఇప్పుడు ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ లెట్ సే వ్యాక్సిన్ అనేది వ్యాక్సిన్ వేస్తారు ఒక ఒక ప్రెగ్నెంట్ మదర్ అయింది అనుకోండి సో మదర్ వచ్చి జస్ట్ మెడిసిన్ ఇచ్చేసి వ్యాక్సిన్ వేసి హెల్త్ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ వాడు పంపించేస్తారు మళ్ళీ అంగన్వాడీ వాడు రావాలి వాడు వచ్చి మళ్ళీ అదో అమ్మ నువ్వు ఈ న్యూట్రిషన్ తినాలి నీకు ఏదో ఈ పిండి ఇస్తాను ఈ ఇవి తినాలి సో ఒకవేళ వాళ్ళిద్దరి మీద కొలాబరేటివ్ వర్క్ ఉంది అనుకోండి అప్పుడు ఒకేసారి వస్తారు ఒకేసారి వీళ్ళ నుంచి డేటా వాళ్ళకి వెళ్తుంది వాళ్ళ నుంచి డేటా వీళ్ళకి వెళ్తుంది 
సో ఎఫిషియంట్ యూసేజ్ ఆఫ్ రిసోర్సెస్ ఉంటుంది అండ్ ఎఫిషియంట్ డెలివరీ మెకానిజం కూడా ఉంటుంది సో సచ్ అలాంటి ఎగ్జాంపుల్ సో దెర్ బి కొలాబరేటివ్ వర్క్ అండ్ ఈవెన్ ఈవెన్ ద కొలాబరేటివ్ వర్క్ విల్ బి బిట్వీన్ ద హైర్ ఆర్కీస్ ఆల్సో లైక్ టాప్ బ్యూరోక్రసీ టు ద గ్రాస్ రూట్ లెవెల్ బ్యూరోక్రసీ సో సచ్ వర్క్ షాప్ ఆర్ వర్క్ షాప్స్ ఆర్ లర్నింగ్స్ ప్లాట్ఫామ్స్ విల్ బి క్రియేటెడ్ అండర్ మిషన్ కర్మయోగి అండ్ అండ్ ద ఫైనల్ పాయింట్ దెర్ విల్ బి త్రీ సిక్స్టీ డిగ్రీ ఫీడ్బ్యాక్ లైక్ వి వర్ డిస్కసింగ్ దెర్ విల్ బి పీరియాడిక్ అసెస్మెంట్స్ దెర్ విల్ బి ఫీడ్బ్యాక్ ఆల్సో లైక్ ద గ్రాస్ రూట్ లెవెల్ పర్సన్ ఆర్ ద పార్టిసిపెంట్ ఆర్ ద అడ్మినిస్ట్రేటర్ దే విల్ గివ్ ద ఫీడ్బ్యాక్ దట్ వీ నీడ్ సచ్ స్కిల్స్ we want to have such improvements in the system so there will be continuous cyclical process so all these features will make end of the uh, at the end all these features will help in improving the efficiency and the service delivery so this is almost like gs question but you have to bring in the principles of civil services values which emphasize transparency accountability right and also efficient uses of resources right efficiency responsibility right uh, making public outcome more over the self interest all these principles you can bring in as the ethical answer good governance model minimum government government yes that could be brought in so that is about the theory questions uh, vivek sir will discuss about the case studies right so understood about all this right okay thank you